everyone i'm going to discuss a little bit about subjective refraction today so the word refraction can mean the way that light is focused or bent by a lens or a prism right so refraction can also mean the measurement of a person's refractive error so there are several ways by which refractive error may be measured okay it is called subjective refraction because we rely on what people or the subjects tell us the purpose of subjective refraction is to determine by subjective means with the combination of spherical and cylindrical lenses necessary to correct refractive error this correction provides the base best possible acuity with accommodation relaxed so let's find this out in a video i'm going to play a video for you what are the equipments that we will need for subjective refraction let's see so we will need a retinoscope uh, uh, to find out the objective power with a, or we can do it with auto refractometer we can use a uh, trial frame we will need a trial frame we we'll need a trial box occluder pinhole occluder okay a near vision a, a distance vision chart a near vision chart and again before commencing a subjective refraction we need to ensure that the patient is seated at a 6 meter distance from the snanel chart the illumination in the testing room should be at a comfortable level of brightness for an indoor setting okay you need to comfortably fit the trial frame onto the patient by adjusting the nose piece interpupillary distance and vertex distance to ensure that they are properly centered the examination begins by testing the patient's base corrected visual acuity in both eyes separately without correction again conventionally the right eye is te tested first an occluder is placed over the eye that is not being tested okay so we can use the pinhole in the plate is the is then placed before the patient's eye and your vision is then tested again right so what is that like first we always need to check the visual acuity of the right eye we will place the occluder over the left eye okay and we'll ask the patient to read the letters he can see on the snanel chart okay he will read from top to bottom okay then let's see again so what happens when a patient suppose if, if the patient uh, has a refractive error okay then he will be able to read up to a certain amount of line right maybe uh, he, the pa if the patient suppose can read up to 612 6 by 12 acuity line then we have to check again by putting a pinhole if the patient's visual acuity improves through a pinhole that means the patient's we, we need correction the patient has a refractive error we need to correct it by putting lenses okay or if the patient has a 6 by 6 visual acuity which we con consider as a normal visual acuity then we don't need to put any pinhole or we can directly write that the patient has a 6 by 6 visual acuity or he has a optimal visual acuity so in the presence of refractive error in most patients visual acuity will improve with the use of the pinhole the examiner aims to assist this level of visual acuity or better by the end of the subjective refraction so first of all we will extract the value of objective refraction of the patient from the retinoscope or auto refractometer exactly before subjective refraction we will always perform objective refraction with ha with the help of a retinoscope or a auto refractometer and what the value we will get we will get a value right so we will get the value of the objective refraction from the retinoscope let's uh, suppose our objective refraction is this plus 3 with plus 1 the axis 180 the entire process of subjective refraction involves the patient fixating at a snanel chart while the clinical 
presents a variety of lenses and alters the power of the lenses in the trial frames according to the patient's subjective refraction regarding improvement to their vision. So what are the stages this process includes? First of all, we have to refine the sphere, then refine the cylinder axis, then refine the cylindrical power, and then we will perform duochrome test and we will perform binocular balance testing. Okay. So first of all, we will place the value of objective refraction in the trial frame and occlude the other eye. We are doing this for that plus 3 data with plus 1 data cylindrical at axis 180 degree power. So how to refine the sphere is that ask the patient to fix it on one of the letters on the lowest line of the acuity chart that they can see comfortably. Right? Then we will ask the patient is that letter clear with or without with or without the lens. Okay? So if the patient reports that the letters is better about the same, add the plus lens to the frame and repeat. Okay, if they report that the letters worse with the plus lens, do not give the plus lens. Instead, instead now offer them a minus 0 0.25 sphere and ask them is the letter better now or just smaller or darker. Okay. So this minus lens should only be offered for a brief moment to avoid accommodation. If they immediately report that the letter is better, add the minus 0 0.25 sphere to the trial frame and repeat. Suppose after adding minus 0 0.25 the test spherical, the patient says it is better now and got vision improvement up to 6 by 9. So the final sphere is plus 3.25 minus 0 0.25 is equal to plus 3 diopter spherical. So remove both the spherical lenses and put plus 3 diopter spherical okay so the current value in the trial frame is plus 3 diopter spherical with plus 1 diopter cylinder at axis 180 degree and the current vision is 6 by 9 so now we will refine the cylindrical axis so the cylindrical component is fine tuned subjectively using the zection cross cylinder so to check the cylinder axis with the ZSC we have to hold the ZSC handle along the trial frame cylindrical axis and ask the patient to look at any letter of 612 optotypes like this ask them does the letter look clear with lens 1 or position 1 or the other okay or about the same or is it about the same Rotate the trial frame cylindrical axis 10 degree towards green side of ZSC. Towards green side of ZSC because the, the power we have is that in on the trial frame is plus power. Align ZSC handle parallel to the better side. Then you have to ask the patient again does the letter looks clearer with lens 1 or lens 2 or about or it's about the same. To refine the cylinder axis, we have to align the SSC handle parallel to the current cylinder axis. Okay, so current cylinder axis is 180 degree. So you have to align the handle of the ZSC parallel to the cylindrical axis that is 180 degree. Then ask the patient, does the letter looks clearer with lens 1 or lens 2 or about the same? Okay, so if the patient says lens 1 is clearer. This is reveal point. Now rotate 5 degree trial frames cylinder axis towards green side of the ZSC. Okay. So it will move according to the picture as it is shown in the picture. So after doing ZSC, our final cylinder axis is 5 degree. After refining the cylinder axis, the current power in the trial frame is plus 3 diopter spherical with plus 1 diopter cylindrical at axis 5 degree. Now refining the cylindrical power. power. For refining the cylindrical power, what you have to do, we use the ZSC to refine the cylindrical power by aligning the ZSC axis parallel to the trial frames cylinder axis, the way it is showing in the video. Then ask the patient, lens position is 1 is better or lens position 2 is better or both are the same.
then add plus 0.25 liters spherical to the trial frame cylinder. The final cylinder power is plus 1 plus 0.25 is equal to plus 1.25. Referring the cylinder power, now you have to replace the plus 1 diopter cylindrical with plus 1.25 diopter cylindrical. Now the current power in the trial frame will be plus 3 with plus 1.25 at axis 5 degree. With the power patient vision is now 6 6. So now you have to perform the duochrome test. And how will you perform the duochrome test? Uh, this is a monocular subjective test to minimize accommodation whilst the distance prescription is worn, which is especially important in myopes. If a myope is overcorrected, the prescription is too minus, that means they are effectively rendered hypermetropic and may experience some asthenopia due to prolonged accommodation. The patient is asked to compare the clarity of the letters on the green and the red side. If the letters of the green side are clearer, 0.25 diopter sphere is added and if the letters on the red side are clearer, then zero minus 0 0.25 diopter sphere is added. Suppose this patient says that both colors are equally clear, means our spherical power is accurate. Okay? So binocular balancing test, then we have to repeat. How will you do? The repeat step 1 to 4 for left eye subjective refraction, yes, you have to do that. Okay? So suppose left eye subjective refraction is this, as shown in the video, plus 2.75 diopter plus 1 diopter cylindrical at axis 180 degree. So this will be the final step to balance any accommodation and is done once both eyes have independently been subjectively refracted. It is particularly useful in young minus to ensure that their prescription is 2 minus, is not 2 minus. Okay. Now ask the patient to fix it on a letter on the lowest line they, they can see. Then place a plus 1 diopter sphere over the left eye and a plus 0 0.25 sphere over the right eye and ask if the letters are better or worse or about the same. If the letter is better or about the same, add the 0 0.25 square to the right eye and repeat. Do not give the plus lens if the letters appears blurred. Just shown in the picture, uh, just shown in the video. Repeat the process with the plus 1 diopter sphere over the right eye and the 0 0.25 sphere over the left eye. If the letters is better or about the same, add the 0 0.25 sphere to the left eye and repeat. Do not give the plans plus lens if the letter appears worse. So, thank you. This is it.